deadliest fighters in the world will meet in a no-holds-barred combat to determine who is the ultimate fighting champion. When I saw the first commercial for UFC 2, I saw them pick up the champion, Hoist Gracie. I was shocked. This guy won. Gracie Jiu Jitsu all the way. There's no chance. I begged my parents to buy UFC 2. I showed it to my brothers. I showed everybody, like, we have to watch this. And then they showed the lineup of guys he's going to fight. I thought, okay, no, he's going to get killed. A fourth degree black belt in the art of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Hoist Gracie is the undefeated ultimate fighting champion. Expect Hoist to take his opponents to the ground where he can apply his devastating chokes and joint locks. Hi, I'm Hoist Gracie, and I'm back to defend my title as the ultimate fighting champion. Like, I, I didn't see part one, but this Brazilian guy is gonna get killed. He weighs 176 pounds. Now here's a guy that's ready to meet him. His name is Kimo. Kimo believes he is a warrior in the service of the Lord. This phenomenally conditioned fighter plans to administer a little chemotherapy to his opponents tonight. This guy's 250 pounds. I was like, this guy's gonna get killed. Is he crazy? You won't see, you won't see the intensity that came from the other fighters. You'll see a very strategic guy here. You saw a kick by Hoist. Hoist has got a wrist. He's got a reversal. Kimo exhausted. Both men showing great endurance. Hoist is trying to get the arm. Whoa. Look at this. He's Whoa. trying to get the arm here. And there it is. Unbelievable. Kimo is okay. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. One of the best bouts in the history of the UFC. And he won. The new generation who hasn't watched that, they have to go back and watch it. They should. They have to. Because that's the genesis. They set martial arts on fire. Everybody wanted to do jiu-jitsu. I couldn't find a jiu-jitsu school in Montreal. I was like dying. Like, if you ask me, cut your arm off, we'll teach you jiu-jitsu, I would, I would do it. Like That's how badly I wanted to learn it. I met a purple belt from Henzo Gracie, Angelo Exaracos, and I was like religious with my lessons. He would teach twice a week, but I would train all week. I made my own mat, I invite my neighbors over. It was a mind-boggling experience to learn jiu-jitsu. It actually worked, a martial art that really works. Imagine you have no martial arts training, none. Take everything you've learned, throw it away. Okay. Take away all your physical training. Okay. You walk into a room full of people. How do you feel psychologically? A little insecure. Insecure. Yeah. That's how regular people feel. They never train in their life. They're unskilled to deal with a situation that might occur. It's such a gift to train. A, like I train all my students, my kids. It's mandatory. Training to a certain level is mandatory. It's like mathematics is mandatory to a certain level. Well, I think that would stop a lot of bullying. I've said this before, yeah. but I think it's counterintuitive to people. They think that bullying is a mean person, and if you taught them how to fight, they'd become meaner. Mm. But thats I don't think that's the case. I think bullies are rare. insecure. Yes. Yeah, I think if you took away that and they got to establish through training that they have character and that they're worth something and they don't have to be insecure and they build up this confidence, you wouldn't see them going out and, and picking on people. I've had so many parents tell me, I don't recognize my son when he's with you. He's so disciplined, he's so kind, he's soft-spoken. Mm. He's like at home, he's an animal. He acts oh up, he's... Yeah. I'm like, really? Well, here, if he did that, it would be a problem. You know, yes, like, like people right. respect the dojo, they respect the environment they're in because there are other guys out there that put you in line. And that's the real world. And some people, they don't know that. You learn through martial arts, you know, like respect everyone, man. Respect is huge. One day you're the, the hunted, the other day you're the hunter and it's just the way life works you know like have respect i've yeah. seen people like on, on video they like they're in a certain situation and they act all crazy hey this might spark some violent event here Fuck 1207 homie I mean, what's practice Fuck these niggas man hey, fuck these fuck niggas man i'm out here go like you don't want this you don't know what violence is you've seen it on tv you've seen it in a movie you think you know what it is to be punched and kicked this could end really bad for you like would you want to play with that if you know what it was like sometimes i see people starting a fight i'm like this person has no idea what they're talking about like they've never been in a fight they're instigating a fight a fight might occur and they might regret it Like they don't know what it is to be hit. 
to be attacked, to be, to be in a fight. You understand what it is, and I think most people don't, and I think most people are scared of it, and I think that's why they posture. That's why they puff their mm. chest up. That's why they pretend. But most people have zero idea. Most people that haven't had any sort of physical altercation, they have zero idea of how vulnerable they truly are. Attitude is the, the most important thing. Mm. Attitude is the first. And I feel like the new generation today, they're like harder to train than the last generation. Because, really? yes, because they're more proud. They're more proud. Like they're always trying to make a reason why they're not doing well, as opposed to saying, look, I need to get better. They kind of find excuses for what went wrong. What do you think is the cause of that? I think we have a privileged life. The first generation of any, any pioneers of any country, they're always, we have nothing. They claw their way to the top. The first generation claws their way to the top. The second generation saw that hard, hard work. So you came in here, you had nothing, you, you could barely put food on the table, but you did everything to make it. Your kid saw that. He saw how food got on the table. But you're handing him down all these resources, a business, inheritance, education. Like for instance, my parents pushed me to be educated. My parents are not educated people. But when they came to Canada, they pushed me to become educated. And now, with your education, these new assets, this new business, you're ahead. The third generation is where generally things go wrong because now they're getting things, but they didn't see how it was made. They're just, oh, I have this iPhone, but I didn't see how they built this empire. And they just got stuff, but they didn't go out in the, in the wild to go get it. Yeah. And those are the ones who are going to tell you, hey, you sinned with that food on the table. You know, you kill that animal, you put them on the table. Right. What a sin on you, shame on you. But you're like, hey, you know, you ate from this table. This whole world we built was from this manner, you know? So that generation, they don't know what it takes to survive. Like for instance, me, my kids, I don't give them anything unless they earn it. I feel like if I give my son something for free, I cripple them, psychologically. Mm -hmm. Take a tiger from the zoo and take a tiger from the wild. Is it the same animal? One of them can hunt and kill, the other one can't do nothing. The one from the zoo, you took something from him. What did you take? His instinct to survive, to fend for himself. Once I feed you, I weaken you. If I feed you, oh, I made you weak. Me, I teach you how to hunt. You know, I have to teach my son how to hunt. So one day, I tell my kids, what are you gonna do when I'm dead? What are you gonna do when I'm dead? Who's gonna feed you? Who's gonna take care of you? I like them to earn. If you give somebody a lot of, a lot of nice things, they become egotistical. And I'll tell you why. Because they're so insecure. You can tell an insecure martial artist from a secure martial artist. The insecure martial artist doesn't want to roll with this person, doesn't want to train here. It's because like he, he doesn't want to eat humble pie. You can tell, that's what happened. How much of that we have in martial arts? We have tons of that. Guys with super black belts, but never fought. But nobody ever saw them in action. So I feel like that's what happens at one point. Success breeds, you know, what Nietzsche calls the last man, you know, your fat cat on a pillow. You fight so hard to give your kids a great life but that great life kind of ruins them. 